are listening to the Soul Ascension Show with Angel Healing Founder Callista. Welcome into our sacred space where you can truly be your radiant self. It's time to get inspired, to get creative, to be who you came here to be. Rise and shine. All is here for you. Hi, beautiful souls, and welcome to the Soul Ascension Show with me, your host, Callista. Oh, it feels so good to come to you live and to feel you all who are calling in, who are here live uh, with me. Last time we did a podcast, it was recorded, um, and I kind of lost that buzz, so I'm really happy that I can come to you live and I'm sitting on my birthing ball, <laughs> still waiting for the little boy to appear. Um And today's show is a very special one. It's so close to my heart. And it's all about the elementals, the nature beings that reside very much in every habitat, every natural system on the earth. Uh, But they also reside within us in our very breath. And many of you have requested a show to learn more about our ancient friends. And from the 30 plus questions that have been sent in, all vast and varied, I felt that we we really can't do them justice in one hour. How can we? So what is exciting is I can reveal that this is going to be the first of five podcasts all dedicated to exploring the elementals. And you know, when I first started public speaking, my talks were focused on the elementals. Back then, people were interested in hearing about who they are and how to connect with them, but really not to the extent that I'm seeing now. And the reason for this, I feel, is that the veils of separation are no more. Not that they've ever existed in the first place, other than what our mind has conjured up. And coupled with this, I'm seeing this collective thirst to expand on the existing knowledge of our nature friends. And many of you have been sharing that you're remembering that parts of you are elemental, uh, aspects of your soul that's that knowledge that awakening is coming from within you and you want to know more some of you have shared that you feel a deeper connection to the earth and her systems and as a result you've met the elementals and your meditations and uh, or physically when you're out in nature and this is wonderful so I'm really happy to be able to share the knowledge that I know and be here as a channel and a bridge for all the beautiful beings that are present with me now, that are present with you, that want to share more because we're ready. We are ready to hear more. We're ready to remember. We're ready to feel them as they best support us to ascend. And in turn, they know that as we ascend, we're helping Mother Earth to do the same. So if you look around your room right now, is there any plants? Is there stones or crystals near you or water? Do you have a fire burning or candles lit? If so, the elementals are with you in this very moment. And if you're listening to this podcast outside, well, you're even more touched by the presence of the elementals. But even if you were sitting in an empty room and there was nothing there, it was just you, the elementals would still be with you in your very breath, in your cells, in your blood, as our nature friends exist within the elements of all life, the primordial elements that have created us, that have created everything, that of the earth, the matter, the air, consciousness, fire, that creative energy, water and ether, The animism of all life, the spirit of all life is always here with us and the elementals are as ancient and as purposeful as humanity itself. So in this, the first of the five elemental shows, I'd like to introduce you to the types of nature beings that exist, sharing with you how I met them and what I've been able to glean from them and how to communicate with them, how to work with them to help my path and purpose and hopefully to help your path and purpose. So, so much 
fun and magic is here for us and I hope that you're ready. I hope that you feel the essence of who the elementals are through these special shows as they have so much to share. In this podcast, I'll be taking you into a special soul immersion journey to discover what elemental is working with you now and to receive guidance from them, from this beautiful being or collective consciousness of beings to best serve your path. And I would love to hear from you after your journey if you'd like to share your experience or if some questions come up through that. And you'll see the number to call in Blog Talk um, to call and speak to me live through the Blog Talk screen or you can post them through the chat room. And I'll aim to cover as many of the queries that came in as well. Um, All those questions, I can't believe so many came in. It was was brilliant. And thank you for them, beautiful souls, because the more questions you send in, the deeper and the wider that we can go for really that will dictate where we go, where the show goes. And it helps us all to remember, doesn't it? helps us all to... um, Remember who we are to awaken all these aspects because the elementals are very much within us. And I believe that I'm getting a number, 75%, if I could could calculate it, but 75% is coming to me of humanity here right now. People living on this earth right now have an aspect of their soul that is elemental. And you may have seen books and you may have uh, came to other podcasts and radio shows that talk about incarnated elementals or incarnated angels. And we're we're feeling this more and more. It's coming back to our consciousness because we have had lives where we have been elemental or where we worked with them at such a beautiful co-creative level that they have merged and they have aligned and became part of us. So I'll be sharing a little bit more about that uh, today, hopefully, and over the five shows, because there has been loads of questions about being an incarnated elemental and what does that mean. Feel free also to share your feedback of today's show on the Ascension Radio Network Facebook page. I feel I should really give a shout out to that page because I've not really promoted it. Um, so if you want to go over there and click like to join, if you haven't already done done so, that would be great. Um, we post all the updates, me and Patricia, off all the shows, and uh, it's good to it's good to get that out there, that page, because it then helps the show become a bit more out there too. So all this amazing information and remembrance, and all the journeys that me and Patricia share are being enjoyed by more and more souls. That's our aim anyway. Before I go into talking about the elementals, I'm a big believer in experiencing them. To really feel them, to feel their presence, rather than just sit and listening to me, um, to have your own experience. So I'm going to invite you now, if it's safe to do so, if you're not driving, if you can Just settle yourself and come into a quiet space just for a few minutes. If you can do that, I invite you now to close your eyes. And just take a big breath, big breath in. And big breath out. Breathing in again. And breathing out. One last time, big inhale, filling your body with breath. And exhaling, letting go. Let everything just melt away from your day. Any conversations you've had, any people you've met, letting them just be a distant memory. Letting go, bringing your energy back, bringing your beautiful self back into this moment. 
And we're going to invite the elementals, these beautiful primordial beings, to be with you, to be with you right now. Ask them all to come forward and join this party, this huge big circle that we're creating around Mother Earth, inviting the presence of Mother Earth herself and her divine counterpart to be here. To be the ground on which we're sitting, but also to be the spirit that we're breathing in. That canopy above us, holding us, supporting us. Breathing in, coming into this moment. And I'm going to invoke the energy now of the earth. Strong, stabilizing earth energy. Connecting us to our ancestry. Connecting you to your ancient wisdom. To the remembrance of your soul your path, your purpose. Bringing in the energy of the earth now, breathing it in. Breathing it out. And now invoking and bringing in the energy of the air. The air. Energy of inspiration. Clarity, breathing it in, breathing in air which heals on all level of your body and your being, breathing it in, breathing it out. Invoking now the spice and the energy of the fire all that's fire to come forward, the creative force, the focused force of our being, of all that is, to connect us to our confidence and our knowing, breathing it in, breathing it out. Invoking now and bringing in the energy of water. Whatever water means for you. Harmonizing. Flowing. Intuitive. Breathing in the energy of water. Breathing it out. Invoking now the essence of spirit, that which breathes you, moves you and guides you, that is that bridge to merge you with your higher self, your soul, breathing into your spirit, breathing out. And when and with this union, bringing forward the presence of the divas, the overlighting divas of each element that act like archangels for the elementals, overseeing their function, overseeing how they connect with humanity, bringing in the divas. Bringing in the nature beings, the wise ones, who are working with you right now for your highest and greatest good. Calling them in. And they are here. They are with you. And we thank you, beautiful wise ones, beautiful elements, elementals, divas. May you bring forward all that's highest and best for us to know, to remember, to accept, to be 
in today's show from this point forward. Thank you. And so it is. All right, beautiful souls, opening your eyes when you're ready, or maybe you just want to keep them closed and just listen. Everyone says I've got a really calming voice. (laughs) Hopefully it won't put you to sleep. Um, We have a a beautiful journey to share with you later on, but I really wanted to do that first. It felt right. The elementals are very much here, and uh, like myself, they're all for experience. They're all for you getting... um, (laughs) <laughs> in the thick of it they're saying you know just diving deep and having fun with who they are because they reflect part of our consciousness um, and they know that you can't have an experience of who they are through knowledge through just me speaking or through learning from a book or a workshop um, it's only through having that intimate one-to-one connection that you truly understand who they are So I'm sure you felt them there. And a lot of the times people will say, are elementals real or are they just the fabric of fairy tales to me? But if you had an experience with them right right now, then you know that they're real. They're tangible. They're living. They're co-creating with us, with all of humanity right now to support us and to maintain Earth's homeostatic balance. And you probably have felt the touch of them when you're outside in nature. Yesterday I sat under a tree with my mum. We went for a beautiful walk in the woods and we sat under the canopy of a huge big Douglas fir tree and we could just feel the energy of that tree but also the spirit of that tree um, which the name that I... uh, used for the spirit of the tree is the dryad. We felt the dryad of that tree, the keeper of the tree, very much there, very much present and welcoming. Now, sometimes dryads are not welcoming (laughs) or sometimes they're neutral. They're certainly not um, uh, dark. They're they're very much uh, loving beings, but sometimes they can be a little bit cautious of of humans. so that might be, you know, if you've ever approached a tree and you felt a kind of repel from it or um, an energy of don't kind of don't come any closer, don't come into my space. Like maybe, a, a, you know, a human would say to you if you invaded their space, um, that can sometimes happen. But yesterday as we sat under this beautiful fir tree, it was so welcoming. So yeah, we felt the peace. We felt the immediate peace sitting under that tree. So maybe you felt that, or maybe when you go to the oceans or a river or you walk by the the sea, you feel your troubles just melt away. And if you have, then you felt the elementals. And these feelings are their very essence. And the more that you acknowledge them, the more that they will become apparent to you and they'll show up more in your everyday life. And... As well as looking at Mother Earth, as well as looking after Mother Earth and her many habitats, elementals also support us in many ways. For example, the Earth elementals inspire us to look after our physical body and our master healers. The air guardians remind us how to breathe and balance our mental body. The water elementals work on our emotional state and help to strengthen our intuitive senses. The fire nature beings work with our intent. They inspire us, they bring ideas, they motivate us. And those classed as spirit, or ether, these beings help us to maintain our connection with source and aid our soul's path to enlightenment. And they are, and there is shades of grey in between, <laughs> just like everything. There's elementals that cross each other's um, habitat and realm, and we will definitely get into that in, in great detail when we look at the elementals for different shows. For example, the next podcast is going to be all about the earth elementals. The following one will be all about air, then water, then fire. So we'll really break down and evolve the current knowledge which 
there's not really much that is there out there on the elementals. Um, not that I've read anyway. I don't. I'm never encouraged to read. Maybe I should. So maybe there is lots of information out there, but it certainly never weaved its way to me. So we'll definitely go into a lot of detail because there has been a lot of questions that came forward. For many years, I've consciously worked with the elementals because it's, it's just a part of my path. It's just part of this path that my soul has um, chosen before it incarnated. But my very first remembrance of them was when I was a child. And as I shared in the last podcast, my mum and my gran were very uh, nature-loving beings, just as my mum still is, I'm sure she's listening uh, to tonight's show. So thank you for helping me to uh, speak to the fairies and speak to the stones and speak to the trees when I was young um, because it's really helped me to be so at home in these realms um, you know, a lot of people say to me, Callisto, how how can you connect? How can you connect to the trees so well? How can you hear the energy of crystals and the heart of crystals? And it's just because I don't I don't have any blocks to that. I don't I don't see that as something that's out of my reach. Um and hopefully I hold that mirror for other people too, because it's not out of our reach. They're like us. Um a word that I A word that describes this that um, came to me lately, and I've never heard of this word before, and it's called animism. And I love that word. Animism meaning that everything, every object, even inanimate objects, have a spirit, have a consciousness. And so if you believe and perceive yourself as an energetic consciousness too, then it's easy for you to tune in and tap into anything. Uh, You just have to sometimes know the code (laughs) or the key. Um, So hopefully the tonight's show and the following shows to come will give you these keys. Uh, They're all within you. This knowledge is all within you. I'm just helping to remember, perhaps, and awaken um, what has been dormant. So just like I was when I was young, I was really sensitive and open, but As I grew up, I let this innocent become dormant. I built up resistance, I built up blocks, conditionings. Those who were in my reality didn't believe, and by natural osmosis, I I became a disbeliever too. Um, I kind of lost that magic of the natural world, that connection that I had, and fell into the separation of materialism, as I think many of us have. But that's okay. That was absolutely fine. And I'm really glad my life has panned out the way it has because we're always on the right path. There's there's always learning in everything that we do. But the career path I chose took me into academia, took me into scientific research. And I did love my job because I knew I was helping others. But deep down, it just something had to change and something was changing within me. There was this desire, there was this seed that was growing that I didn't even know what it was. It just was getting bigger and bigger and the more I ignored it, the more (laughs) it seemed to grow. Um, And it wasn't until round about 2006 when a strange looking course seemingly fell into my lap. I was... uh, I was in work one day sitting at my computer and I was looking for an evening class and all of a sudden I saw a course of Reiki and I didn't really know what that Reiki was all about and uh, for like like many of you, I'm sure Reiki has been a doorway that's opened up so much. It's helped you to reawaken to who you are and for me, that's exactly what happened. And I know that the elementals... And the angels guided me to Reiki to help me open up. And it started off a series of events that saw me leaving science and setting up my own holistic business, doing therapies, but also creating skincare, organic skincare infused with elemental energy and angelic frequencies and Reiki. And through doing these through making these products, it was called Kitty Soaps, 
it's no longer um, a business, but it's it's there. Kitty Soaps is still there. I'm sure I'll get, get to it when I retire <laughs> because it was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Every day I would wake up and I would craft products with the assistance of many of the these divine helpers. One day I would invoke the fairies and uh, through having a direct connection with them, met my own fairy guide, as Raphael, who came to me first of all like a little image, a little um, spark of light at the corner of my eye. And the more and more I accepted that this was her, the more that she went from the corner of my eye straight into my line of vision. Um, and I started to see her and she beamed round the kitchen so fast, like a blur of streaky light, um, really, really fast. Re- look, at, She was um, a fire fairy, really inspiring. And she would bring forward the most eclectic ideas and scents and colours for the soaps and the products. Um, and I also met mermaid guides. I met guides from the earth, gnomes. I started working with a beautiful soul, uh, named Mary, who now lives over in Ireland, and uh, she set up a intuitive circle. And every week, we would have the presence of McGinty <laughs> coming in, who was a leprechaun. Um, also, through the Kitty Soaps journey, I've met imps and pixies, uh, dryads, of course, tree dryads, very much present. The only beings I've never really worked with are elves. So I don't think I'll be talking much about elves because I don't have much to say. (laughs) Um, If they choose to come forward when we look at the Earth Elementals next week, brilliant. If they don't, um, that's fine. Elementals, like angels and other divine beings of light, will come forward to you. They'll manifest in a way that's most appropriate to you. And this could be First of all, you see fairies as just um, a sense, like a knowing that they're there. Or you might see them as small winged beings, like myths would have us believe. Or in their truer form, as a bright fleeting light or colour, as an energetic force. And for years I thought the true form of a mermaid, a type of water elemental, was half female or half male, and half fish. Excuse me. But in reality, this wasn't the case. Not for me, anyway, because the first time I saw a mermaid with my physical eyes, and I was asking, oh, for months and months and months to see a mermaid, I really was intrigued because a big part of my soul is connected to the mermaid realm. So I really wanted to see what they look like physically with my eyes. And I... um. And what I saw was the most incredible swirling vortex of light and water. And it spiraled in and out. And it was truly magnificent. If any of you have ever watched Doctor Who, (laughs) and um, the starting credits, when you see that vortex, uh, the TARDIS going into the vortex and the different portals, that's what it was like. And at the time, I was standing on a beach um, in St Andrews here in Scotland and I was just beside the shoreline and I was on my own and it took me a while just to really ground and get centred. Grounding into water energy (laughs) takes takes skill. Uh, It certainly took me a while anyway, maybe you're more adept at it, but it took me a while to really tune into water energy and get get into that centred state. And I asked to see the mermaid and she showed me this vortex and it was so beautiful. And I asked the mermaids, why is this? Why are you depicted as half human, half fish, but yet you're manifesting in this form? And she said to me, the mermaids, like other elementals, take the form that represents the functionality of their being or their habitat. And as the planet is now coming into a greater level of awareness and understanding, when appropriate, we will manifest in a true energy form. We are a reflection of your understanding and commune with your consciousness to take the best form for you. 
And I was intrigued by this and have since, from that point forward, only ever asked the elementals to show me their true form. And sometimes I did a vision quest last year and I can't talk about (laughs) the vision quest in terms of what happened in that journey until August. You have to, if you've done a vision quest, you know that it has to take time to cook, as it were, and integrate for the whole year before you share the story. And I'm telling you, beautiful souls, I cannot wait to share this story and the journey with you come August time when the year will be up um, because I'll be able to share a lot more about the elementals. um, And yeah, they're telling me not to to go any further with that. Um, Knowledge is really ready to be evolved a lot more than is out there a lot more than is out there in books and a lot more than the airy fairy stuff (laughs) that's out there, you know, just elementals or beings of light and love. And yes, that's absolutely true, but uh, there's hierarchies. There's, uh, There's levels of consciousness in each elemental realm and it's not just black and white. There's, there's so much that, we're kind of missing and we've we've kind of just adopted from fairy tales and myths and, and believed uh, and some of these myths are ready to be debunked and I think come that August show we will be debunking a lot so I have to be kind of mindful to not share things that I've experienced through that vision quest but I will I absolutely will and I'm a big, big advocate of sharing if I've if I've um, experienced something to share it because I know if it had value for me it'll definitely have value for somebody else talking about perceiving elementals how have you perceived them I would really love to know how you perceive them and um, I see there's some callers on the line I'm going to take everybody into a journey to meet your elemental guide and to to again have that one-to-one connection with them. But after that, I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions or if you want to share your experiences about how you perceive them, because not everybody will see them, but you'll sense them. And like I said, when I first met the fairies, uh, the fae, they manifested as a blur out the corner of my eye and it was only through my acceptance and allowance that they knew they felt comfortable to show themselves completely to me. When you go through the forest, you might see faces in the wood grain or the bark of the tree. Um, This morning, when I was tuning into this podcast, I looked outside and there's big fir trees. Um, Really blessed to have big fir trees outside the house. And the way that all the the needles were... um, formed <laughs> was forming this beautiful big face and the face was just looking at me and smiling and it was really real and tangible and these magical things happen you, you know when you don't perceive that there's a veil anymore the separation goes and you start to see the magic the real magic that's in everything um, maybe you've seen faces in water or in flowers Um, I invite you just to go out into nature and just ground and relax and ask the elementals to come forward. Ask them to come forward and and just be open. You may not have a huge, big uh, connection with them straight away, but it will build up. And a lot of them are wary of human beings because, you know, we've collectively wrecked and ravaged the earth haven't we for millenniums and it's just the ebb and flow of humanity how it's been since the year dot and um, I'm sure it will continue like that in in different ways Uh, we are ascending absolutely but not everybody is going that way and some people are taking you know their time with it 
some people are speedy Gonzalez, they're way ahead and some people are a little bit more slower so the elementals are a little bit wary so the more that you open up to them acknowledge them give gratitude for seeing them gratitude is always a big key to connecting uh you'll start to feel you start to feel them more and be aware of them more know that they can be found everywhere absolutely everywhere and each type of elemental has their own habitat and depending on what country they live in they'll have different duties for example the fairies that you get the flower fairies for example that you get here in scotland will be completely different to the flower fairies that you get say in america and i know for a fact that they are because when i've traveled around I've made it a point, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to elementals, I will sit and tune in to different plants and flowers and talk to them and just get to know what type of elementals live in that habitat. And it's amazing. Uh, I think a part of me didn't believe it to begin with, but then I thought, well, of course they're different because the humans are different, aren't they? We've got different languages, different cultural uh, and ethical points of view or you know everything's a little bit different depending on what country we live in elementals a question that came forward was can elementals cross each other's habitats and realms yes they can do and they do so in a blink of an eye because they live outside time and space they don't live in the third dimension they live in the fourth or above sometimes a little bit higher than that if they're an overlying diva so they're not bound by time and space. They can be anywhere in a blink of an eye. Um, excuse me. Um, what's coming forward there is they can also manifest in physical form, in a human form, just like an angel can. They do so to monitor uh where humanity is in their consciousness, in their awareness, uh, there's a lot of monitors. Uh, elementals will choose to be human monitors. Yeah, I'm sure maybe you've even had experiences with them. I've certainly met people who have been in all ways a dragon <laughs> and in all ways a mermaid, um, which has been really interesting. A lot of us are hybrids. We're a bit of, a bit of each other. And we'll definitely talk about uh, the hybrids and, and what that means in later shows. But for now, I would really like to take us into a journey, into a little journey. I'm going to go break for an ad. And then after that ad, we're going to go into a soul immersion journey to meet your elemental guide. So back in a moment. For powerful, on-purpose meditations, visit vibedeck.com slash Callista. Active Energy Journeys to Empower Prosperity, Joy, Wellness, and Love to Flow Freely in Your Life. For online courses and personal sessions, visit Facebook.com slash Callista Ascension. Be who you came here to be. Arise and shine. Welcome back, wise souls. You are listening to the Soul Ascension Show with me, your host, Callista. And today we are bringing in the wise ones, the elementals to be with us. And I'm about to take you on a meditation journey. I just want to say that on vibedeck.com forward slash Callista is the extended version. Might be a little bit different, actually. Um, To the meditation that we're about to do, you can download a journey that's called Meet the Elementals. It's a really good extended journey for you to have a deeper connection with the elementals. You'll also find journeys about meeting the dragons and the unicorns and the fae and the mermaids. If you really resonate with these types of elementals, you'll find journeys that will bring you into their realm. And all of these journeys, they're they're not like a guided meditation. There's so much more than that. They're an active energy space that opens up the portal to take your soul, your awareness to them or them to you. And you marry and you come together. And a lot of the journeys are attunements. So the more that you're attuned to the realm, the more that you can see. It's like um, 
the blinkers have been taken off your perception and your mind and your beliefs, but also in your eyes and your third eye. So you can really see, perceive and connect with these amazing beings more to best serve your life and to best serve Mother Earth's ascension. But for now, let's get into a really cozy space. So I'm going to invite you now to once more close your eyes. To breathe. Breathing into any area now that's tight or that's holding tension. Taking your breath to these areas as they melt and let go. Breathing slowly, breathing deeply. Allowing your breath to be that inward compass. To take you into your soul. Breathing in. Breathing out. Nothing else to do but relaxing, opening, knowing that the journey you'll have will best serve you at this time, that you will be able to clearly feel and sense and know the elemental that's working with you right now in your path, in your life. You'll have a direct experience with them and it will be perfect for you. And so it is. So just continuing to breathe. Breathing out through the soles of your feet. Imagining roots of a huge big oak tree growing from the soles of your feet as they extend downwards. Downwards and down and down and down. Intuitively flowing to the centre of the earth as they wrap around her like a dragon's claw wrapping around its crystal Connect deep into the heart of Mother Earth. Breathing into her. Breathing up her energy. Through the roots of your tree. Through the soles. Through your legs. Pelvis. Stomach. Relaxing every part of you. Flowing to your heart, opening your heart now. Your heart can't help but beam light out of its front, its back, its sides, down your body, up your body. And you know that the more heart opened, the more connected you are to your heart, the more that you'll feel and sense the elementals who are ever present. Let's breathe your awareness up from your heart centre, up through your throat, up through your head, behind your eyes, out through the crown of your head now, letting your energy canopy over your body, over your aura, like a waterfall of soothing light. We consciously connect you to your soul, to divine love, to all that you are. And anything that's not of this nature just falls away now effortlessly. Effortlessly it goes. Breathing into yourself. Breathing out.
we're going to ask now that the elemental that's resonating with you, that's working with you, come forward. And this element, this elemental being may come from the element of fire or earth or air or water. It may come through spirit, through ether. Just letting this beautiful being with a form or it may be formless through your knowing come forward now. Connecting your heart to theirs. Breathing them in. Your inner vision opens. Your hearing, your knowing, your sensing. And you instinctively know the type of elemental who's came forward to you. Perhaps they have a name, a vibration, a sound. Asking what their name, their vibration is now. enjoying this time of connection as I leave you here asking for any guidance to best serve your life asking for any understanding about who they are the elementals as a whole being guided Accepting all the gifts that they bring forward to you. Any understanding. Any reminders. The elementals often guide us to have deeper love and appreciation for who we are. Breathing into the love, the appreciation that's here for you. Letting their energy merge with yours. We're going to ask them now to gently stand back as we close the journey. But knowing at any time you can come back to this space. You have visited this space, your soul knows it. It will easily find it again. Thanking your elemental. Letting them start to fade from your consciousness. As you bring yourself back into the moment. Breathing in. And as you breathe out, just starting to wiggle your fingers and toes. Gently waking yourself up. And I hope you enjoyed that beautiful soul. It's just a short journey there. But as I say, the expanded version you'll get on vibedeck.com forward slash Callista. But I hope you had a good experience there. If it was of value and purpose. And if you have any questions, just hitting that, I think it's number one, um, if you're on the on the call, and putting any questions into the chat room. I'm going to come to producer Greg, who has a question. Uh, okay. Hi, Greg, do you have a question? 
Yeah, yeah. So my question was, so in what ways do the elementals make their presence known? Is, is there really some way that they'll try and... Sorry, there's so, some way that they'll, they'll try to make us make themselves known to us. Mm-hmm. Yep, they do. Okay, I'm just going to put you back on mute, Greg. Thanks for your question, love. That was a really good question, Greg. Thank you for that. Um, it tends to be that we are more inquisitive of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, they do make themselves known. And, you know, the first time I started working with them, really consciously, I when I would go into woods, I would smell the sap. I would smell the uh, the scent, the bouquet of the trees or the flowers and I always felt them saying hello that was their hello um, and they will look at you they'll you know, they'll check you out uh, today when we were in the forest and yesterday there were so many eyes upon me and my mum as we were walking through the woods, so so many eyes um, <laughs> they, they are they're inquisitive of humans, definitely, but it tends to be us, it tends to be humanity that wants to connect with them more because um, they know exactly who we are. They have that higher perspective, but it's us. We want to know more about them. We want to understand them. We want to know how to connect with them. And there's many different ways for you to connect with them. I would say the first, the first nugget, which probably seems really just simple, but uh, the first thing to do is just to acknowledge that they're with us. Just to acknowledge that they're there. Any times when you see that flickering of movement out the corner of your eye or uh, you just find yourself starting to sing when you're outside weeding your garden or when you're in the trees and you start to see faces in the bark and the, and the trunk, just to acknowledge that they're there and to speak to them. You know, you might feel silly speaking to a tree or a stream or a flower, but the elementals wish to work with us as much as we want to work with them. And the more that you open up your heart to the existence of them, the more that you'll feel them. Um, writing a journal is always good as well, recognizing each time you communicate with them so you can look back and see how your journey has unfolded as the months progress. Other ways I would say is walk the earth daily. For me, that was one of the greatest ways to connect with the earth was to touch her every day. It was to feel her, to kiss the earth with my bare feet every day. And Greg, I'm sure you see me in the mornings <laughs> with my glass of lemon and water, um, walking the walk in the grass, even when it's freezing, even when it's frosty or it's wet, I'll be out there in the morning connecting myself to the earth. And it has so many health benefits to do this. But energetically, it opens you up more. It it dissolves these built up mental perceptions and veils that we have created that have been passed down to us and they simply don't exist. If we connect with her daily, if we connect to Mother Earth, we're naturally connecting to the elementals. Surround yourself in nature. Breathe in every day. If you can't get outside, if you don't if you live in a, a city, um you can't really get to a, a a wood or a park, bring flowers into your house. Bring plants crystals, candles into your home, asking the elementals to bless and accompany these gifts from nature. Flowers especially are very dear to me and Greg you know that I have to have flowers in the house <laughs> at all times because there there is fairies that exist in the flowers. If you've got flowers in your house right now, there'll be fairies that exist in them and Bringing flowers into your house is inviting the, is inviting the fae to come into your home as well. And if you consciously say that, if you consciously connect to the flowers, even more so. And bringing the flowers helps to open up your heart. It helps to heal on so many different levels, especially for the divine feminine. This is one for Patricia, if you're listening, because she's always bringing us nuggets of wisdom about the divine feminine. Flowers are so healing for the feminine, for um, for trauma, for abuse, for suffering, for self-sabotage, 
bringing flowers and, and sleeping near them will really help as the fairies help to open up your heart and to heal. Uh, you could also bring crystals into your home and give them intentions, connect with them. Every crystal, every stone has a diva, has a spirit consciousness that you can tune into and tap into. Every time you light a candle, there is what's called a salamander within it. A beautiful snake-like being. Maybe you've seen this when you've had a bonfire outside. Um, I posted a few weeks ago from our fire pit that we had the most gorgeous elementals. Salamanders were coming forward, little fire dragons, uh, spirulites were coming out. These gorgeous little beings of fire are there. Um I'm going to share with you one of the one of the little tools that I do. So most days I will light a candle, but I won't just light it and and that's it. I'm not just it's not an unconscious act to me. It's a very conscious act. Every time I light that candle, I will ask the elemental, ask that little fire salamander within the fire to bring in a, bring in an energy, whether it's motivation or divine love or bliss or joy, whatever I'm calling in, and I'll give it gratitude. I'll always give it something as well, because I'm taken from that fire, I'm going to give back to it too. This is especially good if you have candles around your bath. Give each of the candles, each of the little fire salamanders, an intention, and you will feel it. You'll feel, If you've got candles all around your bath, you will feel cradled by the most creative inspiring support and when we get on to the week when we're talking about the fire elementals i will tell you my journey about the dragon (laughs) the fire dragon that came forward from a candle the very first time i encountered uh, the dragon this was my experience so i'll save that one for um the fire week other ways to help your communication with the elementals Ask them, ask them to support you. So, like we said there about um, about the candles, asking the salamanders to bring in new ideas or intentions. You could also sit by the water. You could ask the mermaids to help support and buffer you through the change that's going on. Because there's never, uh, there's not another being I would come to than the mermaids to help me go through change, to understand that change is a necessary part of life that helps to grow us. If you're seeking enlightenment or deeper understanding, you might ask the unicorns to come forward in your sleep or meditation. If you're looking for physical healing, ask the gnomes to come in and clear and heal your body. Uh, Or you could sit with the back your back on a tree trunk and ask for healing oh, wow that is just incredible to do that and I'll talk more on the earth week uh, in the next podcast about that have fun would be the last thing I would say there's loads of different tools to connect and I'm going to write about them in the unicorn book um, that I'm doing right now but the last nugget is have fun elementals love to play they love laughter and fun so the more that you can take yourself lightly the easier it will be for you to communicate with your guides. But for now, beautiful souls, thank you for listening to the show. Um, Please come over and join us on iTunes. Like, subscribe, rate the show because it really helps to bring benefit to others who are also seeking this knowledge. But until next time, rise and become infinite. You truly are the one that you've been waiting for. All my love. You have been listening to The Soul Ascension Show with your host, Callista. Come join our community page at facebook.com forward slash Callista Ascension. Share your feedback to support others to rise up and shine. Be inspired. Be creative. Be your radiant self. All is here for you.